the sequence was taken at GB Cave in June 1968. GB's always been one of my favourite Mendip Caves and I never miss a chance to go down it. On this occasion I went down with Mike York and John Thomas and here you can see John following Mike down the entrance shaft. Mike York was a, a big man in all senses of the word in the Wessex and when these pictures were taken he was at his, in his prime and had for a long time been hut warden of the Hillgrove hut. Also at this time we were in the process of uh, building the new headquarters at Upper Pits. Here you can see Mike and John dropping down into the mud passage or the crawl that leads into mud passage. Once through the, 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 the crawl there's a couple of 15 or 20 foot climbs down into the gorge and this is Mike on the second of the, the two climbs once you get it, we got into the gorge it became apparent that we didn't have enough light to do justice to the place and we concentrated on getting a few shots closer up towards the formations up on the balcony just walking across towards the bridge end of the balcony there and then as they went back you can see that there, there are some uh, nice stalagmite bosses on the floor these formations are on the uh, roof immediately above the balcony and uh, there are one or two helictites up there, which I managed to photograph. There they are. Um, unfortunately, most of the ones up in the upper grottoes have uh, been damaged. And here's John leading Mike back down from the balcony on his way out of the cave. DB has always been a popular cave, and uh, one time when it was under the of the UBSS it was difficult to get keys. Now things have uh, eased up but it is important to keep the cave locked as part of the access agreement. The swallet itself and the uh, pasture and the, above it are now in the care of the Somerset Trust for Wildlife Conservation and they're managing it as a prime example of unimproved mended pasture. In 1968, Dave Drew of Bristol University was carrying out a series of tests to find out which Mendip swallets fed which risings. He put a series of lycopodium spores into these sinks and each um, sink had a different colour spore put down it and the risings were set with nets and to trap the spores. And these. Um, sequence here was taken at Banwell Rising at Easter 1968 when Judy and I were roped in to help Jim Hamwell and Pete Cousins to take the readings. Fortunately I got my bow cine light with me and I was able to film even though it was dark. And this is Jim Hamwell uh, taking the, uh, the net out of the water and he's about to sample it via this tube and clip at the bottom into a test tube and the uh, tu tubes were taken back to be s examined under the microscope to see if any of the coloured spores had, had indeed been collected. As a result of this series of um, experiments, most of the uh, streams on Mendip have, have now been traced to their sinks, to their risings. And there's Pete Cousins reading a thermometer, and my wife Judy uh, taking the results down onto the notebook. Jim Hamwell checking the thermometer to see if Pete had obviously read it right. Around this time, with the Wessex conveniently based still at Hillgrove, uh, the club was active in uh, having another go at, re at, at opening Hillgrove Swallet. This has been dug since 1903 by Herbert Balch and uh, the MNRC and several other people have tried it. And in 1968 it was the turn of the Wessex 
the dig being led by John Cornwall, who you can see here at the start of the attic. Unfortunately, John, another one of my friends, had died in the last couple of years. The equipment we had here was, as you can see, is fairly basic a rope, shear legs, and a bucket. And there's John about to uh, start filling up from the bottom of the shaft. I was able with to, to take the bower light along into the little adit to get these pictures of Titch Thompson uh, digging. You can see he was far enough in to need a carbide lamp. This is basic mending digging it as it always has been really. Trenching tool and spade. Bucket or some sort of uh, digging boat. Not, and even uh, gloved or bare hands occasionally come into use. of the trenching tool. The fill there seems to be just quite nice stones and mud. Titch making his way out with the bucket. People on the surface just waiting for that command. Up bucket. It's always been a good place to spend a, a mendip afternoon in the summer helping on the surface at digs like that. A few weeks later I went back with a cine camera and some colour film and to film another sequence of the dig. And John gave a very good demonstration of a, a technique of banging. Here he's just uh, applying some plastic explosive with a hole in it detonator in his hand, careful not get the two together, and paying out the cable as he goes, or rather another mended character James Cobbett is paying out the uh, cable, wearing his uh, familiar long scarf, and John surfaces, applies the battery to the bang wires, and wait for it, it's gone off. John had a little technique he developed to, to clear the fumes from the shaft quicker, or so he said, but throwing, throwing burning paper down, which created an updraft. And this uh, bang's obviously worked, because the offending boulder has now been being removed in small pieces. And, uh, yep, here comes Titch with the the biggest portion thereof. Personally I would have used a boulder net in that situation but uh, brute force and ignorance can uh, work wonders. I think the man in the white shirt there is uh, another one of the regular team, John Church, who's been one of the diggers at uh, Cow Hole. And just in a minute you might get a glimpse of uh, my wife Judy in her pink uh, Jersey as he lifts the boulder up there. Yeah, there she is. This sequence was taken in Easter 1968 when John Church had managed to borrow some georesistivity equipment for the Wessex to uh, experiment with. We took the initially up to uh, above nine barrows in the field opposite the lime kiln to try and find a cave that we knew was there. And there's Judy marking out uh, some of the probes. The principle of georesistivity is that you um, set, set out a series of four probes connected by wires to this box that tricks that John Church is uh, seen using now. The probes are set at different spacings and measurements taken and the further apart the probes are the deeper down you measure in the resistance and the theory is that where there's a cave the resistance should shoot up and you will get an anomaly on the plot. Georesistivity didn't have a good record on Mendip 
because before the war Professor Palmer of UBSS had tried it over Lamlair and claimed to have found a chamber. People got excited about it and dug for this chamber and never found it. So um, we didn't actually get very far with these experiments either but it was a good way of spending a summer day. And there's Kirk, Chris Hawkes, Phil Davis, Atty and uh, James Cobbett in the blue. And there's James Cobbett having a go, taking the readings of the, on, with the rear certificate equipment. These shots.